Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gary GZ Duels, and I'm here today to bring you my uh, battling boxer deck profile for the September 2013 format. I really like this deck, so let's just get into it. For the monsters, we have three of the battling boxer glass draw, two mass chameleons, three of the battling boxer switch hitter, uh, three of the battling boxer sparrow, two of the kageto kage, uh, three of the battling boxer headgear, and then uh, finally two effect veilers. Uh, for the spells, we have one reinforcement of the army, one dark hole, uh, one foolish burial, three mystical space typhoon, uh, one book of moon, and two forbidden lances. For the traps, we have one bottomless, one torrential tribute, two dimensional prison, one uh, compulsory evacuation, and main deck three vanities emptiness. Three vanities emptiness. Uh, fiendish chain, we have it at two, and uh, two X Y Z block and uh, one solemn warning. So there are several things I want to talk about. First of all, you might notice the conspicuous absence of um, something like Blaster, the, the elemental dragon. Now, why did I choose to run Kageto Kage over Blaster? Blaster is good. Uh, you can discard your glass draw into the grave. Sure, you can do that. And then afterwards, you can have both glass draw in the grave. You can have uh, the blaster in the grave. And then you destroy one card on the field. That's That sounds pretty good. But if, it, okay, Say we were in that scenario and you had Kage to Kage instead of the blaster, the result wouldn't be that much worse. In, in fact, the result I think would be better because what happens is you can summon out glass draw and then you can you can special summon out your Kage to Kage. So at the cost of two cards, you summon out these two. And then what you go for is uh, you would go and XYZ into King Furrow Imp. And then you would use Furrow Imp's effect ideally, you detach this glass draw and then you search for a mass chameleon. Now, not only did you plus one, next turn you're in a position to plus one again because Mass Chameleon can bring back your Battling Boxer Glass Draw that you detach, and you can go, not only go for these uh, rank eight XYZs, uh, sorry, rank eight XZs, rank eight Synchros, you can also go for rank four XYZs except for uh, this Lead Yoke, you can go for all of these things. You can go for Lavavel Chain, which further sets up your grave. Uh, I just think the Kage to Kage will allow you to lead you into uh, moves for the rest, like for multiple turns to come. Whereas if you have Blaster, sure, it's all nice and good that you have this glass draw in the grave and you have the uh, the Blaster in the grave, but it's just what what else? What can you follow up with? You don't search your deck, you don't shrink your deck, you don't help with the overall um, strategy of your deck. All you have is a Blaster, which doesn't really do much in the grave with just only one glass draw. So that's why I chose to play Kageto Kages. Uh, and you know, Kageto Kage is a reptile. So if you somehow get King of Furrow Imps, then you know, it's also possible to just search for this as well. It's searchable. It synergizes very well. And I chose to run this over what some other people do. They run uh, Photon Thrasher. Photon Thrasher is good. It's a 2100 attack monster, which is already pretty good by stats. Also, it's good because, you know, it's a warrior. So you can go into warriors uh, XYZs like um, Blade Armor Ninja or something like that, or maybe Excalibur. But all of that is really not essential to me because think about it. If you have uh, Excalibur, why would you want Excalibur when you can go for something like Lead Yoke? If you have Lead Yoke, detach two materials, it will equally be like 3,800 attack, which is really sizable already. You'll be 200 attack under your Excalibur, but really doesn't matter. Now, why would you go for Blade Armor Ninja when you can still just summon out Switch Hitter, Special Summon out something like Last Draw, and then you'll still do like 3,500 worth of damage, and then you can still XYZ into something safer, which is Lead Yoke. So I, I didn't see that as very essential to run something like a warrior type level four that can special summon itself i thought kage to kage is really really good because whatever you normal summon you can normal summon your headgear ditch this into the grave and then you can special summon kage to kage and you'll lead you to moves uh, for days really like kage to kage all right and uh, i want to talk about why i don't run xyz um barrier i think is that what it's called the one where uh, if you're uh, you can you can detach one xyz material and then you can negate one spell, trap, or monster effect that targets your monster. So I chose to run XYZ block over that is because of that targeting limitation. Because for me, a lot of not a lot of effects target very well. And you want to negate sometimes the effects that don't target, sometimes the effects that search, sometimes the effects that special summon. Especially when I'm facing against a dragon player, I want to be able to use XYZ block when they're uh, trying to special summon something from their hand so they can try to use blasters effect from their hand banish two uh, other dragons from their graveyard special summon blaster now i would just use xyz block for example to negate the blaster and then he banishes two dragons 
and I'm I'm ahead because I I spe prevented the special summon and uh, I prevented and I wasted his dragon's effect so he can't use it for the rest of the turn so probably X Y I like X Y Z block much better because it's more versatile and all the things that I'm trying to negate are basically monster effects for spell of traps you'll have protection like uh, forbidden lands which is like inherent protection against you know. Uh, compulsory evacuation against dimension prison. Plus, take a look at your lead yoke. Its effect is already OP. It prevents itself from being destroyed by card effects. It's already preventing itself from being destroyed by card effects. Why add like extra protection? Like, if you can detach a material to prevent yourself from being destroyed by a card effect, why would you want to use another trap card to detach a material to prevent yourself from the prevention of an activation of a spell or trap? It's just redundant. You're wasting another card. Because Lead Yoke doesn't prevent, you know, really cool monster effects, XYZ block really makes sense, and then you can add 800 attack points to your Lead Yoke, which is really cool. Now, I main deck 3 Vanity's Emptiness. This is also very interesting for me, because I like Vanity's Emptiness because of the inherent durability of this Lead Yoke. Lead Yoke, it takes forever for it to get destroyed, and uh, even when it, you know, somehow leaves the grave, most likely it's because one of these cards, like Compulsory Evacuation, or maybe at Dimension Prison, trying to get rid of it, so it doesn't head to the graveyard. Now, uh, what's really good about uh, Vanity's Emptiness is, you know, because of your durability of your monster, you can just keep this, and then your monster can keep getting bigger, but your opponent can't special summon. Also, because you have Mass Chameleon, which is a level 4 tuner, and you can Synchro into level 8, if you have something like uh, Stardust Spark Dragon protecting this Vanity's Emptiness, it's almost impossible for your opponent to get over it, because he can't special summon to get over your... Uh, uh, start a spark dragon and even when he tries to target this Evandy's emptiness to get destroyed once per turn you can prevent it from being get destroyed so it's really really good it combos very very well that's why three vanity's emptiness now i did not tr choose to run kaiser coliseum which i see in some other battling boxer decks because i want to swarm i i want to beat my opponent down i don't i'm not content with just one lead yoke i want to special summon out the Thunder Spark Dragon, the start of Spark Dragon. I want to special summon out more stuff. I want to X Y Z into more cool stuff. Uh, maybe multiple lead yokes and just beat down my opponent, and at the same time get uh, advantage from the things that I can search, things that I can get back with Glass Draw. I, I want to do that. And Kaiser Coliseum does nothing if you have multiple monsters. It makes it so that you can play more aggressively while still having protection, Vanity's Emptiness, uh, and. Uh, instead of limiting yourself like Kaiser Coliseum. So overall, I really like the main deck. It runs very smoothly, very consistently. And even when it doesn't, you'll have an, like a lot of traps. I've seen a lot of uh, Battling Boxer decks. They don't run too many traps. Uh, but I run a whole bunch of traps. And uh, even if you can't get into your basic plays, you can still stall for time with this. In the extra deck, we have Crimson Blader, uh, Scrap Dragon, Stardust Dragon, Stardust Spark Dragon, and also a Cataster. Uh, for the XYZ monsters, we have the King of Furrow Imps, three of these um, Lead Yokes, uh, one Black Ship of Corn, one Diamond Dara Wolf, one uh, Maestro Symphony de Jin. A lot of people will be wondering, well, why would you want this? Because you already have three Lead Yokes. Well, Maestro does is a generic rank four, so if you're in a tough situation where you have something like Glass Draw plus a Kagato Kage, you can still go into Symphony de Jin. It still has a Book of Moon effect. It still prevents itself from being destroyed. It's still a good card. Lavavel Chain. Lavavel Chain really sets up plays. It ditches whatever you want to the grave, like Glass Draw, and it also allows you to put cards on top of your deck, uh, and it's just really good. Uh, Abyss Dweller and uh, Gaga Cowboy. Now in the side deck, uh, something different. I, I realized something different about this side deck, but I want to explain a, car a couple card choices. So first, we have two maxis for the decks that might just outpace you, uh, like you know uh, Karakuri and stuff like that. Heretics, they still wanna they still wanna outpace you. Dragoonities, um, so that it, once they set up, you probably can't do anything. If they have first turn that, then you you basically kind of lose because you don't have like Vanity's Emptiness set. So uh, Maxi really helps Valor just in case. Um, this is a really good card, Twister. I never knew how great this card was until I read it like again. I was thinking to myself, I have a lot of traps, and uh, I really don't like it when my opponent has like say a field card or something like that. How can I get rid of face up spell of trap cards? And then I searched for that, and I got Twister, and I was like, this card is genius. Look, if my opponent flips up Royal Decree, unless I have something like Mystical Space Typhoon, all my traps are locked down, I can't do anything. But if I have Twister, 
all of that changes. I can twister his royal decree, and then uh, I can activate all of my traps again. It's just really good. If my opponent has something like Vanity's Emptiness, my opponent has some of those really, really restricting continuous spell or trap cards like Kaiser Coliseum on me, then I can use Twister. It's a quick play spell card. It's almost identical to Mystical Space Typhoon, except you can't destroy face downs. But why would you even need to? Because in our current meta, we have field cards that are that are like face up. We have Tanky. We have Fire Formation cards. We also have fucking continuous uh, trap cards like uh, these ones, like these Imperial Iron Walls mental drains that you might want to get rid of. So why not Twister? Twister is just much better. Like normally, I would run something like uh, Night Beam because you want to destroy a set card, but Twister, on the other hand, just exactly what I'm looking for. I have Mystical Space Typhoons to destroy face down cards. I have uh, Forbidden Lances in case that he activates something. Now, all I need is Twister to destroy face up spell of traps, and I'm set. So that's why I play Twister. It's just really good. At the cost of 500 life points, you destroy one face of spell trap card and really gets you out of situations. Also, with Spell Shattering Arrow, it also destroys field cards. It also destroys fire formation cards. Destroys uh, continuous uh, spell cards, and it only and increase and it inflicts life point damage to your opponent. Really awesome. Three Imperial Iron Wall because you don't run Blaster. You are not banishing any cards at all. Running this at three can lock down multiple decks. In my opinion, Imperial Iron Wall is the best uh, side deck card for this meta. Two uh, Mind Drain and one Soul Drain. Now you might say Kagero Kage is a uh, hand trap type of thing. It activates in the hand and also Effect Veiler activates in the hand. But if you take a look at what I can side in for these uh, six cards, normally what I would do is I would take out two of these Dimensional Prisons because I would have Imperial Iron Wall that would conflict. And then I would take out these two Kagito Kages and these two Effect Veilers. I'm not afraid of taking out Effect Veilers because I still do have like two Phoenix Chain and two XYZ block. And uh, what I would put in is three Imperial Iron Walls, two, uh, two Mental Drain, and one Soul Drain. And it would basically kill my opponent who's playing Dragons. Take a look. I have three Vanities, Emptiness, three Imperial Iron Walls, two Mental Drain, and one Soul Drain. There's nothing you can do. And also, I put two Shadow and Piercing Mirrors because uh, Infernities are a thing. And sometimes Infernities can get really, really good because you, you try to control them. But at the same time, they have like multiple barriers. And then that's why these uh, Maxis come in. That's why these uh, Imper like these Shadow and Piercing Mirrors come in. That's why these Vanities Emptiness in the main deck really, really helps. And so that's why I play uh, Shadow and Piercing Mirror because sometimes those things do happen. In Zectors too, those things do happen. So that's why I want to play this. I really like this deck. I think that this is one of my more thought, well thought out decks. Um, I, I really did do a lot of research. I looked at OCG deck profiles. I looked at a lot of TCG deck profiles. And um, I hope that you guys will take this deck and uh, enjoy it as well. Because this deck is uh, absolutely very cheap to make. Because of the Stardust reprint, you can get that. Maybe this, uh, this the only thing that's maybe expensive in this deck is the Stardust Spark Dragon. Really, the, everything else has either been reprinted or is a low rarity or is like a common, you know, so it's easy to get. I encourage you to play this deck if you want to play a very cheap deck that is very competitive. So I hope you enjoy this deck profile. And this is Gary GZ Duels signing out.